In this video, we're going to get some more practice factoring out the greatest common factor from a polynomial. And in this slide, we're going to have um, both uh, numbers and variables that we're going to need to worry about factoring out um, from the expression. So in this first example, uh, 8x plus 4x, what is the GCF between those two? So first of all, look at the numbers. Look at 8 and 4. So I always look at the smallest number first. Okay, so that would be 4 in this case. And does 4 go into 8 evenly? Yes, it does. It does divide 8 evenly. So I'm going to say 4 is the greatest common factor amongst the numbers. Now look at the variables. In the first term, I have x squared. And in the second term, I have x. Okay, so x is common to both of them, right? In the first one, I have 2. And in the second one, I have 1. So if I'm factoring 4x out, I'm looking for the quantity that I'd have to multiply 4x by to get back to 8x squared plus 4x, okay? So what would I have to multiply 4x by to get 8x squared? Well, I'd have to multiply the 4 by a 2, right? And I'd have to multiply the x by another x, right? So 4x times 2x would be 8x squared, okay? Now, I'm adding to that, let's go to the, sec the second term. What do I have to multiply 4x by to get 4x? Well, just 1, right? Okay, so again, when you distribute this through, you know, we take the 4x times 2x plus 1. If we distributed this back through, we should get that original uh, expression. So 4x times 2x is 8x squared and 4x times 1 is 4x. Okay, so going across here, I've got 10x cubed y squared minus 12xy to the fifth. So I've got numbers and two different variables going on there. Okay, so first of all, let's figure out what the GCF is going to be. Amongst the numbers, I have 10 and 12. They're both even numbers, so I know 2 for sure goes in there, right? Um, the only other factor of 10 is 5, and 5 doesn't divide 12. 12 has some other factors, but things like 3 and 4 and 6 don't divide 10, right? So 2 is our greatest common factor among the numbers, okay? Now let's go to the variables. We've got some x's in both of these terms, right? So uh, we've got x cubed in the first term and x in the second term. So if we've got 3 in the first term and only 1 in the second, then we only include 1 in the GCF, right? Okay, now look at the y's. I've got y squared in the first term and y to the fifth in the second term. So I know there's y squared at least in both of them, right? So I'm going to include y squared in the GCF. Okay. All right, so if I'm factoring out 2xy squared, what do I have to multiply 2xy squared by to get to 10x cubed y squared? Okay, <laughs> so uh, I'll take it step by step. So just look at the numbers. Um, what do I have to multiply 2 by to get 10? Well, 5, right? And what do I have to multiply x by to get x cubed? x squared, right? x times x squared is x cubed. Okay. And... Um, what do I have to multiply y squared by to get y squared? Well, just 1, right? So, um, so when we factor out the y squared from that first term, we're factoring the entire thing out of there, right? So it's like there's a little imaginary 1 there, but we don't write it. Okay, and then we're subtracting in this case. So 2 times what gives us 12? Well, 6, right? And what times x is x? Well, just 1, right? So we're factoring the entire x out there. And then uh, y squared times what is y to the fifth? Well, y cubed, right? So y squared times y cubed is y to the fifth, right? We add those exponents. So let's work this backwards a little bit. If I distribute the 2xy squared through, 2xy squared times 5x squared is going to give me 10x cubed y squared, right? 
So because uh, x times x squared is x cubed, and uh, we factor the y squared out too, right? So we have to multiply it back in. And then for the second term, uh, 2 times 6 is 12, so we're going to have minus 12 um, x, right? Uh, and then y squared times y cubed is y to the fifth, right? Okay, so in this next example of 6a squared b squared minus 4ab plus 8ab squared. So first of all, like I said, I always like to look at the numbers first. So you're looking at 6, 4, and 8. 4 divides 8, but it doesn't divide 6. Okay? And one of the things, the, the other thing I notice about those numbers is that they're all even. So minimally 2 is a common factor. Is there anything bigger than 2? I don't think so. 3 is a factor of 6, but it doesn't divide 4. So we are done with 2, okay, as a, a greatest common factor with an, among the numbers. Now, they all involve an A, right? So you've got A squared in the first term, A in the second term, and A in the third term. Okay. So there's minimally an A in every single term, right? Now with the B's, I've got B squared, B, and B squared, right? In the first, second, and third term, respectively. So I know that B, minimally, is part of all of those. So 2AB is the GCF. And so what would I have to multiply 2AB by to get 6A squared, B squared? Well, um, 2 times 3 is 6, so I'm going to have 3, and then I have to multiply a times a to get a, a squared, and b times b to get b squared. Okay, now moving on to the second term, um, I need to figure out what I need to multiply 2ab by to get 4ab. 2 times 2 is 4, right? Um, and so if I multiply 2ab times minus 2, I get minus 4ab. So with the last term, I have to multiply 2 times 4 to get 8, right? Now, um, I'm factoring out an A, and there's only one in that term, right? So I, I don't need to include any more A's. But um, B times what is B squared? Well, B, right? Okay. So let's check this. You get really good at exponents with all this, too, what you're doing here. All right. So again, we're using the distributive property here all over the place. So 2ab times 3ab is going to be 6a squared b squared, right? 2ab times negative 2 is minus 4ab. And 2ab times 4ab is 8ab squared. All right. So again, we got to check it, it when we distributed that back through. It should be the same polynomial that we start with. Okay, so now don't be intimidated by the big numbers here. So we've got negative 200x to the 7th y to the 4th minus 400x to the 5th y to the 9th. All right, so um, we've got amongst the numbers negative 200 and negative 400. Notice we got the negative out front there. I want to get rid of that negative, so I'm going to factor it out. So um, between 200 and 400, what's the greatest common factor? Does 200 go into 400 evenly? It does, right? So we've got negative 200. Um, and then look at the variables. Both of them have x's. I have x to the seventh in the first term and x to the fifth in the second term. So x to the fifth is common to both, right? And then I have y to the fourth in the first term and y to the ninth in the second. So y to the fourth is common to both of those, right? Okay, so now I need to figure out what I need to multiply negative 200x to the fifth y to the fourth by to get this original polynomial that I started with, right? Negative 200 times what is negative 200? Well, 1, right? So we don't even need to write anything there with the numbers. But what about the variables? x to the fifth times what is x to the seventh? Well, x squared, right? You add the exponents, yeah? Um, and then y to the fourth times what is y to the fourth? Well, just 1, right? Okay, so 
Now moving on to the second term, what do I have to multiply uh, negative 200 by to get negative 400? Well, positive 2. Uh, x to the fifth times what is x to the fifth? That's just 1. And y to the fourth times what is y to the ninth? Well, y to the fifth, right? 4, to, four plus 5 is 9. Okay. Okay. So let's check this. Distribute that through. So negative 200 x to the fifth y to the fourth times x squared is going to give us negative 200 uh, x to the fifth times x squared is x to the seventh, right? And we also have to multiply times y to the fourth, yes? Okay. And then for the second term, negative 200 times 2 is negative 400. Let's see, uh, we're multiplying by something that doesn't have an x term, right? So we're just going to have x to the fifth there when we multiply that back through. And then y to the fourth times y to the fifth is y to the ninth. Okay, so we get the same thing that we started with, as you notice. It's the same, same as our original uh, polynomial. So we just finished a, a few that were pretty challenging. Let's do a couple that aren't so challenging now. So um, if we have 9 pi r squared plus 12 pi r, okay, so I'm going to look at um, the 9 and the 12, again, just the numbers. What's common to both of those? Well, 9 doesn't divide 12, but 3 is a factor of 9, and 3 divides 12, right? So 3 is our greatest common factor among the numbers. Now, I'm also looking at these variables. Pi, of course, it has numerical value, but it's common to both of the terms, right? So I'm going to include that in the GCF. And then also I'm looking at r squared and r. So r is common to both of the terms. Okay. So if I factor 3 pi r out of 9 pi r squared, um, what do I have? So again, I'm asking myself the question, what do I have to multiply 3 pi r by to get 9 pi r squared? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, right? And um, pi is already in our GCF there. And we would need to have another r here because to get the, uh, the r squared, 9 pi r squared. Uh, 3 times what is 12? Well, 4, right? And again, we factored the pi out, so we're not going to write it here. And we factored an r out, right? If we check this, the 3 pi r times 3 r plus 4, we should have what we're looking for, right? Let's look at the distributive property. All right, so we've got 9 pi r squared, right? So we've got 3 times 3 is 9. Pi is part of the product, and then we have r times r, which is r squared. Okay, now if we multiply 3 pi r by 4, we're going to get 12 pi r, right? Okay. All right, we're getting good at this. All right, now let's take a look at this last example. x squared plus 2y squared. One of those terms has a number, but the other one doesn't. One of them has a variable x and the other has a variable y. Do these two terms have any common factors? No, they don't. There's no common factor that we can pull out of this. So this is not factorable. Another word that we use for this is prime. Um, or irre irreducible, that kind of thing. So prime is another way that we could say that. All right, so if there's a polynomial expression that just doesn't factor, doesn't have any factors you can pull out, we can say that it's prime. Okay, now it's time for you to get some practice on your own.